Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. My name is Seva, and in today's short video from the Excel 101 series, we'll use a simple example to investigate why do we need to use geometric or log return means to calculate the true average return. Our case is as simple as it can be. We invested a hundred pounds for two years, and at the end of the first year, the value of our holdings dropped way down to £20, but in the end of the second year, the value of our holdings have rebound a bit to equal £36. And we want to estimate the average annual return. Obviously, we might be inclined to calculate simple annual returns by dividing the portfolio value at the end of the year by the portfolio value at the end of the previous year and subtracting one, and thinking that as our portfolio value has dropped by 80% in the first year and increased by 80% in the second year, our arithmetic average return, well, it's just going to be the average of these two and it would be zero. However, you can already see it's nonsensical. We have lost most of our portfolio holdings. However, the arithmetic average shows that we haven't lost anything, haven't gained anything, judging by this figure, but we definitely have overestimated our performance quite a bit. The idea is that the average arithmetic uh, return mean does not take into account the continuous compound nature of returns. Losing 80% of 100 pounds is much more severe in terms of absolute uh, losses, in terms of pound losses, than gaining 80% on top of only 20 pounds. To reflect the continuous compound nature of returns, we have to use the geometric mean, or the geomean function, applying it to 1 plus the simple returns and subtracting 1. And that would lead us to calculating the average annual return at minus 40%. And we can simulate an investment with minus 40% return per year, multiplying our holding value by the annual return that we have calculated and see that if we indeed hold our 100 pounds at negative 40 percent return per year we'll achieve the same value that we did here meaning that the geometric mean does provide us with an unbiased uh, true value of the average return alternatively we could have calculated the holding period return using the ratio between investment value at the end and investment value at the start, raising it to the power of 1 over the number of years we held our investment to, and subtracting 1, giving us the same value, minus 40%. And that would also be true, as it gives us the same result. However, what academics use quite often is calculating log returns by taking the natural logarithm of the ratio of the prices, or the values, and then calculating the simple arithmetic average of the logarithmic or log returns. That gives us a negative number quite a bit larger in magnitude than the holding period of geometric return. Why is it also true? Well, because if we convert the logarithmic return back into normal holding period return, applying the exponent function and subtracting 1, we would still get negative 40%. And the logarithmic return, why it's being favored a lot by academics, is that it allows you to quite simply calculate the true average return without using the geometric mean or products, simply because the logarithmic function does break down products into sums and makes everything much more well behaved, especially with regards to calculating the true average return. And that's all there is for the today's short Excel 101 tutorial. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful, and stay tuned for even more content from the Excel 101 series.